So, so far we've been considering infinite potential wells, but what happens if that well is no longer infinite? So if the well now has some height u and that u is a finite number. Well, in this case, the math starts to get hard. So let's give the math a skip here and just describe what happens. So in this case, the wave function of the electron can actually extend a little bit beyond the well and into the region with that potential u. So this means that the probability, which I've plotted here, because the probability, remember, is psi star psi, so the wave function squared, the probability of the electron being found out of the well is actually no longer zero. So the wave function for the electrons trapped in the finite well extends out into the barriers of the well a little bit. And as a result, it means that the wavelength is slightly longer. Now, because the wavelength is slightly longer, this means that the energy levels in the finite well are ever so much slightly smaller than the corresponding energy levels in the infinite well. Where the energy levels are very different in the finite well is when we get an electron whose energy is greater than the energy of the potential, greater than u. In this case, for the finite well, that electron is actually unbounded. So when we have electrons with this much energy, it means that the energy levels are no longer quantized and that electron is free to escape from the well. So a similar thing happens with quantum tunneling. So in quantum tunneling, rather than having a well, we consider a region of space with just a small region with a potential u. Now if we put an electron on one side of it, we've got some wave function on that side to describe the electron. And then when it comes to the barrier itself, the probability of finding the electron inside there actually drops off exponentially. So it's dropping off really quickly, but it's still there. And so there is a small probability of finding the electron on the other side of the barrier. So if we want to think about this macroscopically, this is like saying if we put a ball in a box and sugared around so that it's moving, it needs to be moving to have a wavelength, then there is a small probability that that ball could just escape from the box. Okay, macroscopically this isn't going to happen because those probabilities are so small, but if we consider an electron trapped by a small potential barrier, there is a possibility that the electron can actually be found on the other side of the barrier and so can escape from this type of trap.